In this video clip, I will be discussing the anterior axioappendicular muscles. We find these four muscles located on the anterior aspect of the thoracic wall, and they run over to our appendicular skeleton. In this case here, pectoralis major, we can see attaching to the humerus, or in some cases, some of the muscles go up and attach onto the clavicle, or also onto the scapula. Therefore, these muscles help to function to move the pectoral girdle, which is our clavicle and scapula, or they move our glenohumeral joint. Before I begin discussing these muscles, I'd like to review the movements of the scapulothoracic joint and also the glenohumeral joint. There are six movements that occur at the scapulothoracic joint. In this animation, we can see elevation of the scapula. In this animation here, we can see the opposite. The pectoral girdle is depressing, so the clavicle and also the scapula are depressing here. From this anterior view, we can also see protraction of the scapula. So this is when the medial border of the scapula moves away from the midline. I'll show you from a posterior view as well. Demonstrated in this animation is the opposite of protraction. We have retraction occurring. I'll show you from a posterior view that the medial border of the scapula is moving closer towards the midline. Lastly, we have rotation of the scapula. You can think of the scapula as being on a swivel here. And as the inferior angle and the glenoid cavity point downwards, so go this way, this would be downward rotation. And when they move the opposite way, this is upward rotation. So here we have upward rotation and then downward rotation of the scapula. Some of the axioappendicular muscles are also involved in movement of the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint. Here we can see flexion of the shoulder joint and also extension of the shoulder joint. Demonstrated in this animation is horizontal adduction and horizontal abduction. In this animation here, we can see abduction of the glenohumeral joint and also adduction of the glenohumeral joint. Lastly, in this animation, we can see rotation of the glenohumeral joint. Here we have medial rotation and also lateral rotation. We'll start by discussing pectoralis major, which is this muscle outlined here in blue. Pectoralis major has two major parts. It has a clavicular portion, which I'll highlight here, and it also has a sternocostal head, or sternocostal part, which starts on the sternum and the costal cartilages. The clavicular head originates on the medial third of the clavicle, which we can see here, and the sternocostal head originates on the anterior aspect of the sternum, and also the superior six costal cartilages. This muscle attaches onto the humerus at the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus. When both the clavicular head, so this portion again here, and also the sternocostal head contract together, they help to produce medial rotation of the glenohumeral joint and also adduction of the glenohumeral joint. When just the clavicular head is concentrically contracting on its own, it produces flexion of the glenohumeral joint. And when the sternocostal head is acting alone, it can produce extension from the flex position. So in this animation here, it's showing the humerus um, in anatomical position, but if you imagine the humerus in flexion, and then when we pull the humerus back down into anatomical position, this sternocostal head is responsible for producing that movement. Pectoralis major is innervated by two nerves, the lateral and medial pectoral nerves. Deep to pectoralis major, we find pectoralis minor, which attaches onto ribs three to five. Here's the origin of it. And it inserts up onto the coracoid process. When we pull on this muscle down towards the origin or along its fiber direction here, it will draw the scapula anteriorly and also inferiorly. This is one muscle that is very important in helping to ensure that the scapula stays on the thoracic wall. This particular muscle is innervated by just one of the pectoral nerves, the medial pectoral nerve. The next muscle we'll discuss is serratus anterior, which we can see better from a lateral view of the thoracic wall. One of the characteristics of this muscle is the serrated edge appearance that it has. This muscle originates on the external surfaces of ribs one to eight, which we can see here, and its muscle fibers run posteriorly and go deep to the scapula all the way towards the medial border. Here we can't see the entire muscle because the muscle is actually going deep to the scapula. Now that the scapula has been faded away, now we can see that serratus anterior goes all the way over towards its medial border. 
This particular muscle, when concentrically contracting, we think of it pulling towards the origin this way, it's going to help protract the scapula or move the scapula away from the midline of the body. It can also produce upward rotation of the scapula and is very important in helping to hold the scapula onto the thoracic wall. The last of the four anterior axioappendicular muscles is called subclavius. Based on its name, it's underneath the clavicle. So sub, like a submarine, means below and clavius is referring to the clavicle. This particular muscle is really quite small. It originates at the junction of the first rib and the first costal cartilage and it goes down and attaches to the undersurface of the clavicle. The function of this muscle is to anchor the clavicle. Because of its size, it doesn't have much of a role in actually depressing the clavicle, but theoretically, if we pull along its fiber directions, it would do depression of the clavicle. At the beginning of this video clip, I demonstrate some of the movements produced by the scapothoracic joint and the glenohumeral joint. It's a great idea to go back and watch these animations again and see these muscles in action.